Yo, yo, there he is. We made it. We made it. Beautiful technique, right? It's amazing. Amazing, amazing. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are you at home or in the studio? I'm at home. Actually, my uh, I'm gonna clean my lens a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's way better. Way better. That's way. I'm better. at home today, working from home. I uh, did some, um, yeah, paperwork and stuff. You know, emails. Oh, yeah. The good easy. days. Yeah. Exactly. Easy, easy. No so, worry. Yeah, exactly. Hey, thanks for uh, for taking the time to do this. I've um, I've had a Q and A uploaded before, so I have some questions prepared from uh, people who might be watching right now. Yeah. Otherwise, cool. if there's people in the chat, feel free to drop your questions in the chat, and uh, we'll pick a few of them. Yes. Let's see if this works. Oh, it looks like it's gonna work. Okay. What are we going to focus on? Let me pick one. Yeah, maybe this is interesting. Hey, I can see it. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Is, is Jay Hardway frustrated sometimes during the production or tired of it? So this is the thing. I don't know if people can see me because in my screen, I'm uh, in front yeah. of the person. Okay, wait. Um, definitely in, in creating, uh, wait, I can maybe, can I swipe it away? No. Uh, I could take it away. I could take it away. Yeah. So definitely in music production uh, and in any creative business, there's always going to be moments of um, frustration. I think 90% uh, of your time creating music is fighting against frustration. And then 10% of the time you're in the flow and you just keep going and you try to keep that feeling as long as possible, but it's going to end. And then you're back at the, the frustrating part again, but you kind of learn how to, um, how to deal with that or at least accept it a little bit. And then, yeah, yeah you, you just gotta trust your own creativity to come back sooner or later. And it can, it can last, uh, it can take a day, it can take a week, it can take a month, it can take a year, but if, you're, if you've ever been creative, it will come back. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure of that. So what is it that you're frustrated about? Is it the fact that you can't manage to get a synth right or is it, the mixing part, or is it mostly the creative part? Um, it's it's mostly the creative part, where mm -hmm. I am like struggling to get a good idea or don't know what to do with a certain melody. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes, definitely, you know you have a good melody, and you know you have a good idea for the song, but you just can't get it. Uh, you can't make it sound the way you want. So that's also definitely a big problem. But I I I think the most um, like starting from scratch. I think that's where the well, it's fun, but then you have you make like ten things, and then after ten things, only the first little bit good idea pops up. So yeah, it, uh, it's actually fun because um, for musicians, the most frightening thing there is is an empty project. Yep, you know, like starting from zero, like the painter with the the empty. Exactly, uh, exactly. It's yeah. super interesting because there's a lot of mental blocks and mental issues that come by when you look at a at an empty page you know yeah. self doubt frustration all those kind of things and i think it's good for people to hear that even an artist at your level is still struggling with that you know yeah. it's, it's it's hard to overcome that and it's hard to well even even deal with it on a, maybe it's maybe it even becomes harder the bigger you get maybe yeah i think so too yeah is that something you noticed um well, there's a there's a certain pressure that you put on yourself after you've released a song. You want it, you want this, the next song to be more successful, mm -hmm. but you have to uh, learn to step away from that pressure and to um, go back to where you started. Like what what is the foundation of what you do? And in my case, it's making music and loving making music. So mm -hmm. I always got to try to go back to have fun and not. Um, I think that's the most important part for me in my creative process. Mm -hmm. But I think for everyone, it's it's different. And I think you should always go back to your foundation. So if you're a really um, creative guy with marketing or you're really um, technical, dive into that technical stuff. Yeah. Dive into tutorials. And, and for me, it's like I want to jam with, with, um, with guitarists, for instance, or people who play piano yeah. really good. And then yeah. I get inspiration from that. But that's different for, for everyone. So... Is that also something from Mesto who joined our chat? <laughs> yeah, I know this. Yeah. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something you have to find out find out by yourself that you have to 
even besides besides of the the success that you need to go back to the beginning like why did i actually started this or did someone tell you like your management or whatever um i think a lot of people told me but you have to experience or feel it yourself how it works um before you um before you do it uh, before you realize what what it is they mean and i think it's like with uh kevin hart really explained this really nice nicely he said <laughs> in his career especially financially jeff he says there are, for instance there there are three doors and door one is you mess everything up and like you don't want to go into that door door two is you still mess a lot of stuff up but you don't make the same mistakes as door one and door three is where you want to be um yeah. he says that he took all the doors so he started at one but because he can teach people about his um process he can show them door two yeah um and like you don't make the the basic basic mistakes but you will still make mistakes sure uh, because you have to experience a lot of stuff before you realize how it feels and how how to deal with it yeah so. maybe dive deeper into that because um uh, most people watching might notice but since a couple of weeks you joined artist coaching as a mentor yep. and uh, the thing you just described is is mentoring you know yeah. like it, helping people avoiding making the basic mistakes yeah said. Uh, right now you've had a couple of sessions um how did you like it so far it's a lot of fun it's uh i can tell from my own experience and i think that's uh valuable to people um the way i see situations the way how i work with labels mm -hmm. and it's it's not to, to say like hey this is how it's supposed to be but it's to give people an idea of oh that's also possible yeah and it's the same with creativity like you see something you like you get inspired you you kind of try to make that but it will always become your own version of it um yeah. and that's i think really can be really helpful I, I would have loved it if i could talk to a big artist in in my the, the very beginning of my career for sure yeah. so everybody needs to book me <laughs> <laughs> learn, learn from our mistakes huh? <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay let's pick another one um let's see how long did it take you to release your first song on a label <laughs> i'm gone again um i was let's see i was like 15 when i started and my first release was at 22 mm -hmm. so like something around seven years before i had my first release um, holy shit and i hear a lot of people in my demo drops and like they say oh i've been producing for one year and it doesn't sound better why am and i not famous yet yeah why why <laughs> can't they release it and i yeah. think you need to reach this point in your creative process where you realize how how good your track actually is and yeah. um yeah that can take for me it took uh, maybe like five years before I, I realized oh wait this is bad and this is good and mm -hmm. for everybody can be different but and how did you yeah. know it was bad or good it's just like there's this uh, there was this tipping point for me when I used to produce on like normal speakers mm -hmm. um and then I, I I got some KRK speakers so like it's the 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 first speakers you, a lot of producers buy uh, very good quality uh how do you say that it's really good value for, uh, for money oh yeah, yeah yeah and I I I started hearing from that point on like oh wait now I hear what doesn't sound good about it and then you're gonna train yourself in that. So you're gonna be more certain of yourself if an idea is good or not. And that's um, it's it's always it's always difficult because it's always based on opinion. But mm -hmm. I guess over the years you learn to uh, realize more like, hey, this is me, and this is what I want to release, and I don't care what any label says. Yeah. Um, and then you don't have to release it on that label. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, you, you yeah. get more confident along the way. Yeah, and then and then sometimes for me with labels, I, I I had conversations about a track. They were like, "Hey, it's not gonna work," and I'm like, "Yeah, but I want to release it because this is this track is about me," um, mm -hmm. and that's uh, yeah, that's I think really really important to have that as an artist. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Next one. Um... Uh, any advice in finishing tracks? 
I'm always getting stuck. Here we go. This again, the creative process. And yeah, and it sucks. What do you what do you what do you do when you're in the studio and you get stuck? Like you've been staring at your screen for two hours and nothing really happened. Uh, I, I open up other projects or I start jamming it's on the piano or the guitar, whatever, just trying stuff out. Um, watch a movie, watch a series, go to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to be in the same building as other producers. Go to there, annoy them, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> bring some coffee with them, go out. Just I think you got to really let an idea go for maybe a day or maybe an hour but sometimes it's an hour sometimes it's a day mm -hmm. and 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 i still have uh, ideas on my uh, computer that i feel like oh can be really good but um i never i don't know why but i never um i'm never able to finish them because it never works out mm. and i just leave them and then i get back to them uh, after a month or after a year and then i try it again and then it maybe works yeah, um, but yeah, that that's. And what you just... also hear sometimes is that artists take such a project, you know, like they've been working on something which maybe like a, a great drop, but they can't manage to get a great break or whatever. Yeah. And then they, after a couple of months, they find back the, the project and they take the melody and they leave the rest, you know, yep. or they take the bass line and re leave the rest. Yeah. So, so they pick the, the the best elements of it and just throw away the rest of yeah. it. Yeah. I get I, that's a great way. Um, I remember um, when I started working with Martin Garrix, that I like had had a couple of projects with some melodies, and he was like, "Yeah, but we can work with that, 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 and one track." And I was like, "Hey, but those are like four good ideas. Uh, we can make four tracks." And he's like, "No, no, just throw it in there. You will make uh, we will make new ideas. Uh, you know, don't worry." And um, I guess in, in songwriting, there's this thing songwriters say, and they say, if you write a great, um, if you write a great chorus, make it your first verse and then write an even better chorus, you know? So uh, oh, yeah. don't be scared to, to just use all your ideas at once and just trust your, um, um, your creativity. And I mean, that's, that's difficult, you know, because sometimes you have this one melody and you're like, I have to finish it like that, but maybe, you don't need to finish it like that. And yeah, cool. But yeah, that's that's also always the the. You never know. Um, you always know in hindsight, and you never know before the release what it's gonna do. So true. I see another good question, which I think will help a lot of uh, music producers out here. Out of a hundred tracks that you make, how many actually get released? Um. Well, let's say 100, 100 um, not, not finished tracks, but like... I'd let's let's go with 100 projects. 100 projects, yeah, maybe five or something. Hmm, okay. I, like, it's, it's, it's like I make so many ideas and I try to... Um, you have, I have songs that, I wanna, that I'm working on that, I want, that I'm finishing mm -hmm. and I like to take my time for that, so I do that. But then it, it, I also want time to just be creative and just Makes sense. work on melodies. And as soon as I feel like that, I'm gonna do that and then save that melody. And sometimes it instantly becomes a really cool project. Sometimes it's just a melody. So yeah, you have you have hundreds of them. And um, I, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't care too much about that. Um, I, I don't know if you should count too much. Like oh, I've been doing it for this many years. Oh, I've I've, been, I've made so many tracks. It's about the track you release in the end. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't care if you make one track and it's it's good. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I see someone commenting like I've made five hundred projects and I only released four, but doesn't matter. You know, like yeah. in the end, um, <coughs> me personally, I believe that there's probably a lot more projects of that five hundred that are release worthy, but yeah. there's a lot of self confidence involved, which leads to you're not being ready to release those tracks. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those tracks are bad. You know, no. you might think they're bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, true. But there, there's probably a million people out there on the world who will like it. Yeah. Let's see. Um, what do you do when it comes down to self motivation to produce music? If you're in times where maybe you're not that motivated. Oh. 
Ah oui. Yes. The connection is frozen. Let me see if he comes back. I think it froze. Let me check. Jay, if you're still here, please send me an invite so I can invite you back again because the connection froze. Too bad. So everyone is watching. Thank you for watching. We're trying to get Jay back into the stream. I think something went wrong with his uh, internet. I'm not sure. Let's wait and see. If you have any questions that we haven't talked about yet, um, feel free to drop them here in the chat section. And we'll try to bring them into the conversation once he's back. There he is. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Yes. I don't know what's, uh, what was going on, but my phone got really hot and it's still very hot. Oh, so, maybe it's the live stream. It's uh, it's on fire. It is on fire. <laughs> I hope it. Uh, I hope it will stay. Um, stay. Warm. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> Uh, the question was, um, what was it self-motivating? So in times when, do you even have times when you just don't feel like making music or? Yeah, a lot. Um, okay. Especially after a couple of years working uh, as a DJ and producer, it just, it becomes a bit of your job. Mm -hmm. And it feels, um, it feels difficult to, to find that first, um, like, why do you do it? You know, like just having fun. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, there's this there's this thing where you try to take it easy, or you're you're have, you're watching a series because you want to relax before you want to get creative, and then you feel this urge to I have to make music. the little voice, to, the little yeah, voice like coming yeah. in, and you're like I have to make music, I have to be working, um, and I think I even haven't figured it out how to how to um, slow down that voice. Mm. But I think in this time I'm learning it a little bit because I can't be working 24/7 anymore. Yeah. Um, so you have to slow down. And yeah, self motivation. I think it's it's. I try to get inspired by others as well. Um, so if you see, if you work with other people, it usually helps. Mm -hmm. If you um, are on a Discord server or on a forum with other guys, and you can't wait to show them your track. Uh, that that's the ways to motivate yourself, you know, to mm -hmm. to work towards a goal, even if it's really small. Um, I think I think that that could be a good idea to set goals, you know, and not just maybe just for yourself, but like, hey, I'm gonna finish that track today, and yeah. you're just gonna keep working on it, and maybe in the end of the day you didn't finish it, but at least you were working on it, and I mean, yeah, um, but it's 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 uh. Tough. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a struggle, and that's I think that's what uh, has to be said constantly. Like it's it's never going to be oh I'm a producer now and everything's taken care of. Like even yeah. for Skrillex or Martin Garrix or yeah, they tough. they still work hard and they still have these struggles, but you don't see them because yeah. they you just see their releases, you know. So you only see the successes. Yep. Yeah, the way how I I actually do think that you can kind of push your creativity or motivation at least because we all have little triggers inside of our minds and bodies that mm -hmm. help us to get into the right mindset. Yeah. Um, for me personally, that is watching after movies, for example, from Ultra or Tomorrowland. If yeah. I watch a video like that, I get pumped. You know, like something in my body changes, which puts me into the right mindset. Yeah. Um, and because of because of the fact that I know that I can use it if I'm feeling down or uncreative or whatever, I know like I have to watch a video. Yeah, and nine out of ten times it helped. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, it's, that that kind of stuff. It's um, it's and that's also again, it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody has to find their own thing that motivates them. You know. True. Yeah, let me uh, find another question. Oh, and one more important mm -hmm. thing: yeah. uh, money is the worst motivator ever because yep. it kills creativity. And I always say, money and making money is very important. 
um, because you have to take care of yourself, especially when you're just starting out. But it can never be the end goal because it kills. Because because you're gonna do stuff you don't want to do. You know, oh, I'm gonna f release that track, which I don't feel at all, but it brings me money. It's it's gonna make you feel really empty. True. Yeah, I agree. There's a kind of a, an extended question on this one because here's someone who asked how to feel motivated. I'll put it up in the screen. How to feel motivated when you don't have much support for your music? Because especially in the beginning of your career, you're, you might be releasing 10, 20 tracks yeah. without any artist supporting it. That's the thing. Um, what, what is much support? Mm -hmm. um, and that's always going to be relative. Um, because I compare myself. I, I, I talked to this with my, uh, my camera guy, Bjorn, who, who said, oh, man, I wish I just you know, had a, had a more steady career like you and, you know, with, with your income maybe or your, your, your name in the industry. But then I feel like, oh, but I want my career to be more, uh, more like that DJ, you know, that's what you do automatically. That's what your brain tells mm -hmm. you like constantly. Um, you, you, you kind of don't want to do that. You don't really want to compare. Um, so that's like, what's it, what is much success? And I think that's something to to, to think about a lot mm -hmm. um, because you can't expect a million plays on your first release, you know, yeah. you just can't. So maybe your first release, that's already a milestone. And then you want to grow from that. And I understand that 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 can be difficult. So that's where um, you set a new goal. Yep. My battery is <laughs> uh, 20 percent. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, you, you set a new goal and then it's hard to reach that. Um, and it's, it's something you have to uh, learn to work and live with, I think. Uh, because like for, for my career, I had like, it went up really fast and then it went down a little bit where immediately I had to switch and like, oh wait, I'm getting less support. And like, I immediately had to learn how to deal with that, which helped me a lot in well later success and later tracks that didn't work that well because yeah you just you gotta find out why you do it you know why do i release a track yeah. to make people happy and if one if i can make one people happy or change their life or whatever with with a track then for me that's success so then the million plays on top are like that are the cherry on top you know yeah, it's actually defining success is a good one because e even in the beginning of your career, you still manage to get success, but it might be smaller than you expected. Yeah. But that yeah. might be, yeah, that's a good tip. Here's a question from the one and only Mesto. Oh. A bit personal. What's the worst track you made in your opinion? Save me. I think someone's uh, phone is getting pretty hot again. Oh, wait, the connection is kind of blurry again. Wait, let me re-invite you. Let me check. Sorry, people. Something seems to go wrong here. I'll see if I can get him back in, if the phone is working with us. I saw a lot of questions coming in. That's great, guys. Thanks for sending them. I'll try to pick the best out of it and um, try to take everyone. Let me see if it's... Too hot for Instagram. Yeah, that's true. That's probably the issue. <laughs> try to see. Yeah, there he is. Oh. Put him in. I hope I'm back. Yep, there you are. I was just answering Mesto's question, actually. Yeah. Um, the worst track I've ever made was Save Me with Mesto. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Burn. Um, no, the worst track I've made. I, I mean, I didn't. I, I didn't make bad tracks and release them, so I'm I'm proud of every single release. Mm. Even and, one of the first, like, is is it something you look back and you never think like, eh? 
No, I mean, for you always got to look at it in the period of when you made it. Mm-hmm. And like, if, if it sounds like shit now, it's because we learn how to produce better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really about putting it in when, when that track was released. And I was happy with every single track I released. Yeah. And of course, you're going to look back and feel like, ah, oh, that track, I don't know anymore. But um, yeah, for me, that's probably if, 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 I, if I look at it like that, that Coffee Please is my least favorite track, but I still really like it. Okay. So, yeah. Good one. Do you have, wait, where's the question? It's not coming in. Do you have tips on how to find your own style? Yes. Um, don't focus too much on which sounds you should use. So that lead or that lead. I mean, if you can find an original sound that you always want to use, fine. But I think your own sound is more in the combination of sounds that you like and you put together and you enjoy. So for instance, for me, I like organ sounds. So I use a lot of organs, but I don't use the same one every time. I just, I like that sound. And Mm. also there's a lot of your sound in your own chords and melody. So try to work on your music theory or your skill with melodies and chords. Mm-hmm. And people will will hear if, if 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 a melody is yours, and it takes it takes a long time, and it takes a lot of tracks to be released. And because the thing with my tracks, people always say, "Hey, it sounds different, but I can still hear it's you." And for me, that's the that's the biggest compliment probably they can give me. Like it's uh, that that's what what I really want, you know? Yeah, I can imagine. But it's it's really hard to realize what your sound is yep. from your own perspective because normally yeah. it's other people telling you right so exactly. hey yeah i recognize your music because of this or because of that or yeah it's, it's really hard to recognize your own sound at least that's what i noticed yeah yeah for sure and and some some something that is like uh unfathomable i think is the word that you don't you unfathomable? Can't, fathomable so you can't grasp oh, what yeah. is your sound in a certain song you know mm. And um, because your combination of melodies and chords, it's like you can't. I can hear when Z makes a, makes a chord progression. I can hear I can I can hear the difference between Z and that mouse, even if they use the exact same sounds. And that's, yeah, that's something. Sick. That's something that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Good. Um, this is probably the big one. Advice for approaching record labels because no one Ooh. listens to my music. Well, I always say like, just try to find the promo email, send it there. But that's that's probably not where you're gonna uh, break through. You got to be really really lucky to get listened to and to get through the first and third and whatever selection process they have. Yeah. What is really important, and I always say this, is build a community around you of friends and producers that have the same goals maybe or the same creative vibe people you trust Mm -hmm. work together with them ask them for help give them help make your own community and because what can happen is one of those guys might get a release somewhere um you know um and he can help you he can like introduce you or at least play your tracks and that's also a thing, like send your tracks to DJs, look for the promo meal, uh, email, ask for the promo email. Sooner or later, if you make good tracks, they'll realize it. So don't put too much time yeah. in spamming artists, put more time in building a cool community. Um, and you're gonna make friends. I mean, <laughs> I made a lot of friends online, who, yeah, who, and I don't mean it in a rude way, but never really broke through, but mm-hmm. you know, they're still friends and that's, yeah yeah that's a, that's really valuable as well yeah exactly and and even online the most beautiful things can start to exist you know like i remember yep. the, the 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 story you mentioned about martin garrix yeah all happened over online yeah through a forum right? one yeah. one forum message and uh, exactly. we, we became friends and we weren't famous at all yet he wasn't releasing yet but you see how it can go uh, and of course i got super lucky um but oh, I also put myself into that position where I ended up having the luck. Like if I didn't put myself in that position in the first place, 
I, I mean, I wouldn't have gotten lucky as well. So that's um, yeah, very important. Good. good point. One more to close off, which is: Did you go to any music production school? Nope. Do you, do you even believe and, in it? Like, do you believe a uh, music production school adds um, value to a career? Well, it's 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 um, it's it's a, it's I I haven't made my mind up about this yet. Like, I I did get a little bit of musically schooled in a like a marching band with marimbas mm -hmm. and th those kind of instruments. Um, but production schools are, I think, a great place to learn some techniques, learn basic techniques about pr production. Mm -hmm. uh, although they might teach you a way to work creatively that you don't want to work or you don't yeah. realize yet you don't want to work like that. Yeah. Um, and But most important thing about the schools is all the other kids are there for the same reason. Uh, well, that's not, not totally true, but it's an easy place to find people with the same mindset as you. So other creative people, yeah. people who, want, who love music. And I think if you're, if you're in this industry, that's the people you gotta um, stick to, and that's yeah. that's why those schools are definitely a good a good place, you know. To yeah, to... that's that's what I think. Is I kind of turned my mind around it as well because in the beginning I was like, schools are not going to work. Yeah. Um, in some way, I still do believe that schools that schools are not able to add any value because you have YouTube, you have tutorials, you have online courses. All the knowledge that you need to know as a music producer is available for free online. Yeah. So it's a matter of having the discipline to look it up for yourself. That's what I believe. Yeah. But there's a small thing, like you mentioned, surrounding yourself with like-minded people, building the network. That's something yep. that happens at those places. And um, yep. but I, I, it's not like you need one to become successful. You know, it no. could help, but it's yep. like most of the people I know. And didn't go to a music school. No, and worth mentioning is that I did a like a normal uh, school. I got my bachelor's mm -hmm. and that education helped me a lot with the business side of things. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I still have people who, um, how do you say, um, do my books and now no, um, my administration and stuff. Yeah. But I know what it is they do. So I know what happens with my money. I know what happens yeah. Uh, with my business and I don't make um, dumb decisions just because this financial guy says it's smart. You yeah. know, I know what uh, what they're doing and I know what they're not doing. So I don't have uh, any company in like some weird construction because I know how how that doesn't work for me, you know? So yeah. that's that's another thing. Maybe it's, it's even better sometimes to get a normal education, so normal, so to speak. <laughs> and, and and school up on like law and economics and it yeah. can help you a lot on the business side uh, for sure true jay uh i'm not gonna hold you any longer i want to thank you for uh taking the time and uh of course. as you I, i'm not sure can you see the chat yep okay there's a lot of people who love you as i can yeah, see yeah <laughs> thanks everybody for uh for tuning in man yeah there's a lot of people Pretty who cool. love you who love your music uh here's a guy who is um you're his main inspiration, so I think that's something you can be proud of, you know, like yeah. inspiring people, um, not just with your music, but also with the, the person that you are. So yeah, I thanks for, um, yeah. for doing this. And uh, as Retrovision says, I'll see you in the Gulag. Yeah, I, I don't go to Gulag, I win. I win. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> thanks for having me, man. You first have to go to the Gulag to win, right? <laughs> I, I, I don't, what's the gulag? I never, uh, I just win. <laughs> what's this thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, man. Bye-bye.